The time-honored formula for producing champion thoroughbreds is to breed the best to the best. Seldom can this concept be described so succinctly and clearly as in the case of Royal Anthem. This remarkable horse was sired by a champion runner, an international sire, and foaled from a broodmare of the year. The best to the best? Quite definitely. Royal Anthem's dam in Neon produced three graded stakes winners. The brilliant speed was exemplified by Royal Anthem's half-sister Sharpgat. From coast to coast, at two, three, and four, Sharpcat reeled off a dozen graded stakes victories. At two, she took the Hollywood Starlet and the Matron. At three, she added such as the Acorn and Santa Anita Oaks. And at four, Sharpcat toured home in four consecutive races, including the Belle Dame and the Ruffian. At one point, her prowess was such that she was handed the greatest of compliments. Victory in a walkover. It fell to Royal Anthem to demonstrate the additional versatility of the brood of In Neon, herself a stakes winner and also dam of the graded stakes winner, Star Recruit. This is the family of the mild champion Roussillon, and Royal Anthem was selected to represent the English division of Prince Ahmed Salman's Thoroughbred Corporation. The great trainer Henry Cecil early on recognized the star potential in Royal Anthem, a handsome and well-grown son of the star runner and sire theatrical. Royal Anthem made his debut on May 16, 1998. The Hatherden Maiden Stakes was a strong first test at a mile and a quarter, but it proved Cecil's high opinion of the colt had not been fanciful. On the outside is Royal Anthem beginning to assert and get on top of Generous Rosie. Cyberworld is running on again in third. These three are clear of the fading Howard Death, but inside the last hundred yards now, and Royal Anthem is going clear under Willie Ryan, wins by three or four. Less than a month later, Cecil entered Royal Anthem in a listed race, the Bayliss Irish Cream Liqueur Fairway Stakes. The occasion was as good as it sounds. Again going a mile and a quarter on the historic grounds of Newmarket, Royal Anthem not only won, but equaled the old course's record of two minutes and two seconds. Royal Anthem in front, Kilimanjaro just won't give in, he's got two lengths to make up but I'm afraid he's not going to get there, Kieran Fallon and Royal Anthem head on to win by a couple of lengths in the end, Kilimanjaro made most of the running finishes in second. Royal Anthem had seen the race course only twice, but Cecil confidently stepped him up for Group 2 competition amid the intense quality of the Royal Ascot meeting. The King Edward VII stakes found Royal Anthem stepping up to one and a half miles against seasoned group winners. The race propelled him into the top ranks of European racing. Royal Anthem, it's Royal Anthem from Kilimanjaro, two or three lengths to scorn, then Central Park dashing home down the outside from Curtius and Dancing Phantom, but it's all over, Royal Anthem by three lengths to Kilimanjaro, scorned is plugging on in third from Central Park, inside the final hundred, and up front Royal Anthem has got it won, Royal Anthem nudged out to retain his unbeaten record. This victory, keeping him unbeaten, earned Royal Anthem a start in the King George VI and Queen Elizabeth II stakes. Here, he was facing not only the English Derby winner in High Rise, but such accomplished older horses as Swain, De Lamy and Silver Patriarch. Such was the aura around Royal Anthem that he was made second choice. Heads a turn for home in the King George, and Royal Anthem takes it up now, but here's Swain the outside with De Lamy. After he finished third behind Swain and High Rise and ahead of De Lamy, Royal Anthem's performance was described by English turf writer Tony Smurthwood as a victory of sorts for the strapping colt. After all, he had had only three races as compared to the globe-trotting experience of the six-year-old winner. Royal Anthem's half-sister had become an established star on the other side of the Atlantic, and Royal Anthem, late in 1998, established his own identity in North America. Prince Ahmed and trainer Cecil sent him to Woodbine for one of the top races on the international calendar, the Canadian International run over a mile and a half. With a proud history, including victories by Secretariat, Dahlia, Excella, Sky Classic and Chief Bearheart, the million dollar Canadian International, as usual, drew a strong field. Royal Anthem treated them all with something akin to contempt. The race had been established in 1958, and no horse had ever led it from wire to wire. No horse, that is, until Royal Anthem. 
and Royal Anthem lets it out a notch. Royal Anthem with less than a half mile to run stretches it on desert waves to a half a length. Crimson Tide travels well toward the rail. Parade Brown is to the outside and fourth. Chief Bearheart is toward the rail. Astarabad starts to gain ground. Stormtroopers just seven lengths off the lead as they come to the top of the stretch. But Royal Anthem is traveling well for Stevens at the quarter pole. It is Royal Anthem by a length. Set down as Parade Ground by Jerry Bailey on the outside as they come to the eighth pole. Now Royal Anthem is put to a drive, but he's still traveling well. Royal Anthem by a length and a half. Chief Bearheart is kicking in on the far outside, but as Royal Anthem got away on him, it is Royal Anthem leading it by two and a half. One last desperate push from the Chief, but England's Royal Anthem wins the Canadian International. This illustrated that Royal Anthem was not only a stayer, but a horse with a burst of speed. Turning for home, I had a little bit of hope, said Chief Bearheart's jockey, Jose Sandoz, but Royal Anthem just took off again. I think he probably could be a great horse, conceded the understated Henry Cecil. He's a very exciting horse. The next year, Royal Anthem at four had a brief campaign, again back in England where he, of course, faced the best the game had to offer. One of the highlights of the decade in English racing was his victory in the Judmont International at the American Classic distance of a mile and a quarter. Once again, he faced a stellar field, including the eventual Arlington Million winner Chester House and Dubai World Cup winner Almuta Wakel. The race summoned superlatives, and deservedly so. Look at a giant stride, Royal Anthem aggressive now as they start the turn past the five into the lead. Two in second place, Golden Snake. The pace is not fast enough for Gary Stevens on Royal Anthem and he comes to take command. Uh, the three to one joint favorite with Greek Dance who's covered up for Kieran Fallon. Past the four fell on Mark who on a long reign and a giant stride, Royal Anthem but being uh, hounded in by Greek Dance running the rail is Golden Snake who's running bravely. After these comes Chester House. Al Mutawakel isn't done with. White Cap Compton Admiral starts to pick up. Al Mushtarak on the wide outside. They come past the two. And at this speed distance, it's Royal Anthem that goes into a length and a half lead over Greek Dance in second. Back in third is Chester House. Al Mushtarak behind these. And a world performance here as Royal Anthem lengthens a giant stride. And that makes the race all over. The Judmont International will be claimed by Royal Anthem, who streaks away from them. Five, six, up towards the line, the most impressive Royal Anthem win. A remarkable performance. A nine-length victory in one of the most important Group 1 races in the world. Even the official commentary waxed enthusiastic. A fierce pace left no hiding place, especially for those who press the lead. And Royal Anthem produced a performance which ranks him upside the very best scene over this trip in the modern era. Doing it with such elan, he doubled an already impressive lead and is a very special horse indeed. Hall of Fame jockey Gary Stevens was ecstatic. I've never won a Group 1 race anywhere in the world with such ease, the jockey said. Royal Anthem has amazing acceleration. When you ask him the question, he throws you back in the saddle. He stretches like a sprinter that can carry his speed the mile and a quarter. Henry Cecil told me, when you're two and a half furlongs out, just go for it. Leave them for dead. And that is just what he had done. The press was equally generous. Hotspur commented in the London Daily Telegraph, there have been some brilliant galloping displays in this mile and a quarter group one contest over the years, but the excitement generated by this one performance was a reminder of how necessary it is to have great horses if this game is to continue to flourish. That writer assessed Royal Anthem's victory as deserving a rating of 140 on the timeform scale, the highest since the great dancing brave of the 1980s. Given such commentary from objective observers, one can readily understand the hyperbole of Prince Ahmed. He's awesome, the Colts owner rhapsodized. Over 10 furlongs, he can take on any horse in Britain and any horse on this planet or any other planet. That glorious moment at historic York would have been the climax for most champions, but for Royal Anthem there was more to come. Sent back again across the Atlantic to another champion trainer, Bill Mott, Royal Anthem was a strong second in the Breeders' Cup turf, then remained in training to launch a five-year-old campaign. He made his debut for the year 2000 in the Gulfstream Park Breeders' Cup turf, 
Again, he was dominating. Royal Anthem is poised and ready to fire. He is three wide on the outside, and there goes Royal Anthem, a tight length from the lead. Unites Big Red and Beautiful Dancer. Thesaurus is next, and they round the far turn, and the race is on. There goes Royal Anthem, and now he takes command, and he powers to the front. Band is passing, going to try to run with him, but Royal Anthem is running away at the top of the stretch. And Royal Anthem, with powerful strides, has taken clear command. Thesaurus and Band is passing. Battle second and third to the outside Unites Big Red, but it's Royal Anthem to mid-stretch, and he is straight and strong. Royal Anthem just runs away. Thesaurus clearly second, but Royal Anthem dominates and wins the Gulfstream Park Breeders' Cup handicap. Another champion jockey had been introduced to the unique qualities of Royal Anthem. Jerry Bailey was duly impressed. He pretty much did it on his own, said the Hall of Famer. The only time I did ask anything from him was when we headed for home, and he just took off. Only injury stopped Royal Anthem. He was retired with six wins and a dozen starts and earnings of nearly $2 million. Royal Anthem faced the best of the world. He defeated 16 champions, more than two dozen group and grade one winners, 55 stakes winners and 14 millionaires. Truly, he was given stern challenges and was never found wanting. His sire, Theatrical, was an Eclipse Award winner in this country and is by Nureyev, perhaps the most versatile of the great sons of Northern Dancer. Theatrical has ranked consistently among the chief international stallions, with more than 50 stakes winners, of which 36 are graded winners, and 17 grade one victors. Thus, Royal Anthem offers breeders one of the most prolific branches of the dominant Northern Dancer sire dynasty, combined with the proven broodmare of the year quality of In Neon. Royal Anthem's racing performance and pedigree together constitute the whole package. Flashy speed, stamina and maturity, class to challenge the world, and brilliance to bring the crowd to its feet. Royal Anthem, a melody and a future to savor.